Hello, good afternoon. We are going to start at the final sessions, the afternoon sessions. Um, first, we'll have a future internet and international cooperation opportunity session, which is focusing on uh, G the Genie Fire workshop of last week. And it will be presented by Pavlix and by Brecht van Meulen. And thereafter, we are looking shortly into European Japan and EU Brazil collaboration that will be presented by Nikos Isaacs. So, first, I would like to give the floor to Pavlix. Thank you, Hans. I think in the morning session, I already mentioned several times international collaboration, which is very interesting, very time consuming, and very challenging, I would say. <laughs> we are now, we have now projects uh, in several parts of, of, on the globe, actually. And uh, recently, there was a uh, workshop in Seoul, Korea. Banan and, and Joel Bakir from my unit was there with a number of researchers. Probably something will come out of there. That. that, not in this uh, next program, and probably not. 15, but maybe afterwards. The Koreans are very eager to, to get uh, in, in relation with us as well. Uh, I will mention now a bit about uh, the Fire Jenny uh, workshop, which took place actually last week. That's why it's a bit uh, fresh. Uh, Brecht was the rapporteur, so I will ask him to give some sort of uh, output from, from the workshop. <coughs> um, in the beginning of the year, I was contacted by NSF, and, and, and uh, we, we felt that it was time to again have a workshop. This time, we we asked uh, the Jenny office and the uh, for fire to to let's say make the detailed planning for the whole thing, which they, they did very well. Uh, we what we did was, I mean, it was it's a general setup on all these international. We have co-chairs, we have a number of sessions, and we invite speakers and, and uh, what we did this time was to prepare a bit more in advance different uh, topics and we also gave more time for, for discussions and, and we focused very much on concrete collaboration between uh, the different researchers so basically the objective was of course to to identify the uh, research infrastructure which we could use for these experiments and and what kind of experiments could be done. We said also that, and that we challenged a bit the participants more than we have done before to, to make sure that we uh, can develop joint specifications, to develop interoperable systems and to adopt each other to uh, each other tools. We shouldn't reinvent the wheel all the time. So this was a challenge we, we, we put on, on the researchers basically. Education was also something uh, be handled separately. We, we believe that that is something where we should, we should exchange students, researchers in the near future. Uh, so maybe Brecht, you can give some sort of concrete outcomes of what you noted from the different sessions. Um, yes, so we had uh, multiple sessions. Um, how we identified is that um, so both people from Genie and from Fed for Fire um, are looking into a number of problems and we try to identify uh, the common problems and uh, the approaches to them. And so the first one I talked is uh, before lunch about the common APIs. Um, so in Genie they have uh, an API which is um, tried to be used by every testbed. We have that in Fed for Fire. There are some slight uh, differences but now, uh, one of the outcomes is that we try to have them all the same, so that we have a common API uh, between US and uh, Europe on that. So this means that um, if you develop a user tool and use that common API, you can talk to resources in the US or in Europe. This means technically, of course, policies of which can who can use what resources is still uh, something else. So this uh, was a very important outcome. And we also decided, because they do compl compliance testing over there, uh, we do compliance testing in Fed for Fire for, the, for those APIs, that we will do cross-testing. So that we know that, indeed, we have a common API which is all the same. So this is uh, a very important one step for, to go forward. Another one was on resource descriptions, because if you have an API saying 
you can ask for, for instance, a list of resources. Now it is the way that each testbed describes the resources in its own way, in its own proprietary way. Of course, if you have very specific resources and you're only the, the, the only testbed who has those resources, this is normal. However, if you look at the number of virtual machines and the number of ways that you can describe a virtual machine, I'm impressed of that. Um, so we try to get those the same. So if you ask for a virtual machine, you just say, I want a virtual machine and you have one. Of course, I do know there are different flavors, of course, and you should be uh, able to specify them more and more, um, more, more specifically. So the, the thing that we saw there, both in US and, and um, uh, FIRE in Europe, is to, to try to use ontologies for that. So that was also an outcome that we are looking into, can we go ontology-wise? What is the impact on the testbeds? Can we have a common description and so on? Um, a more controversial one was the one on policies. So it uh, seems that there are very much different policies between US and uh, Europe on using those testbeds. For instance, in Genie, they are funded by NSF, and it's very logical that all researchers use them for free. <coughs> However, for instance, in Europe, and if we look at Fed for Fire, all the testbeds um, are mostly funded by, by local governments. So, in fact, they determine the policies on who can use them. So this is uh, this was a controversial, the most controversial topic of, of the thing. We also looked in uh, data plane connectivity. This means layer two connectivity between sites and also between the continents. So this means I have here machine in the test lab after me. Um, I set up a layer two connection to the US to another machine, physical or virtual, and I can use uh, the layer two connection. I know you can do this already a long time, but here the thing is, I have a tool, I push a button, it sets it up for me and I can use it. I have been in such uh, connections where we do a number of five, six phone calls every two weeks to set this up. But here the, the plan is, I push the button, I use one tool and I set it up. So this is also something that we are currently uh, setting up and trying to do between the contents. I think uh, also experiments was a session. Um, the thing there is to have for instance, experiments federated over multiple testbeds and also over multiple continents. And there we have a number that we will try to, to set up. So this is more or less what I want to say. Thank you very much. Over to Nikos Nisaris, who is not new, but he started a year ago in our unit, my deputy, if you haven't met him already. Thanks. Hello everybody, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I will be very short. I will try to give in five minutes a flavor of uh, international cooperation um, in uh, Horizon 2020, at least in the work program 2014 and 15 for FIRE. Uh, I want to mention three things. There are um, currently a number of projects with international partners. They mentioned them this morning. Uh, with uh, China, with South Korea, with Japan, with South Africa, with Brazil. Um, in uh, the work program 2014 and 15, uh, it was decided that we will organize once again coordinated calls. One will be with Japan and one will be with Brazil. And in both uh, experimental platforms have a presence. Um, very briefly, the Brazil EU Brazil call uh, will have three themes, one of which will be experimental platforms. Uh, this will be called for uh, later in 2014, which means practically it's together with a second call, or maybe the second year. Um, and the other two themes are cloud computing and high performance computing. And the EU Japan will actually be uh, called together with call one, uh, slightly perhaps later, but we'll finish earlier. The deadline will be earlier. And there we have four themes, uh, one of which is uh, experimentation and development on federated uh, testbeds between Japan and EU. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, which is actually quite important, is that um, apart from these coordinated calls, we are actually evaluating, we are assessing the organization of the first coordinated calls with Brazil and Japan. 
and uh, based on this evaluation we will decide how to proceed with the whole concept of coordinated calls and how to proceed with international cooperation in general. Uh, however, we have one action in the, I would say, pure fire part of the work program, which is quite important and which is building upon the, what Pear and Brett have just uh, presented. Um, and this is the uh, cooperation with uh, our U.S. counterparts and other international partners. So, in the first uh, year of Horizon 2020, uh, we will call for a, pro a proposal for um, coordination and support action, which will look into the collaboration with the U.S., but also with uh, other partners around the world. And we will try to organize concrete uh, reciprocal actions, as was, for example, on, on the agenda of the, the workshop in Leuven last week, meaning how to organize joint experiments, how to um, progress, and there was a question by Jerry, I think, this morning about standardization and interoperability when it comes to federating test beds around the world. Um, so we will look into these questions as well. And uh, we hope to have also a multinational flavor, um, meaning that we will try to engage in this action uh, other international partners that we have, it uh, could be uh, Japan, Brazil, with whom we have, uh, as I said, also the coordinated calls, but it could also be South Korea. We will see how this can be enlarged. So these are the main international cooperation elements uh, when it comes to FIRE in the first two years of Horizon 2020, the two coordinated calls and the uh, coordination and support action with the U.S. and other partners. Uh, one last thing before I close, but is perhaps worth mentioning, is a recent um, memorandum of understanding that um, OneLab, which is a facility which is part of the OpenLab project, has recently signed with the uh, Institute of Computing Science uh, of the Chinese Academy of Science, Tasso Gavras can correct me if I'm wrong, and with the Industry Innovation Center for uh, Future Networks. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, this memorandum also foresees joint experiments, exchange of uh, research staff, and um, organization of workshops as well for the exchange. I don't know if you want to add something. Well, but what is good also, and what I think is important, is the, the development of joint visions for the future okay. development of this, uh, this year. Okay. So this is what will be happening in um, FIRE when it comes to international cooperation. I don't know if we have time for questions or uh, yeah, we could ask if there are questions. Yes, Scott. Well, not specifically international, but I understand from uh, glancing through early versions of the, of the next work package that the open calls, open access structure has been rethought or will be being rethought. Can you comment on the, um, the ways of getting external involvement in uh, infrastructure projects? Okay, it was one of the points I wanted to cover in the next session when we will uh, actually present the plans, but since you're asking the question, um, the concept of open calls still exists in Horizon 2020, um, despite different, let's say, um, discussions that we have had, um, and it will still be possible, even it will be required that uh, large uh, integrated projects, as we used to call them, keep a, a, a percentage of their budget in order to choose users and experimenters, as we say. And this will be organized through open calls. So the, the concept of open calls is still there. Uh, the concept of open access can also still be there. And um, we have to discuss perhaps uh, in this or in uh, our next uh, forum or board meetings, um, also the question of who pays whom in order to uh, do an experiment. Um, but there is also a new concept which is quite interesting. I mean, it existed before, but it takes perhaps a different uh, significance or a different weight in Horizon 2020, which is this so-called third-party financing, uh, 
um, which means that, for example, you can develop funding models uh, whereby a facility uh, is paid by an experiment as a third-party provider uh, without having to enter all these uh, cumbersome, let's say, legal um, agreements in order to make them part of the consortium, etc. So um, I would say, yes, there is a traditional open call, there is uh, open access, there is third-party financing, and perhaps we can even think about more ways that you can actually bring people together and uh, allow them to uh, use each, other resor each other's resources. If not, we have, I think the next, next point will actually yeah, give more information on that. Okay.